very unfortunate to say, everybody, that Sony appeared to be engaging in very deceptive marketing practices for Horizon Forbidden West. It's honestly quite ridiculous, and it's something that you, with the PlayStation app in your phone, can actually confirm yourself right now. It's very confusing. Uh, Richard Hoig is saying that this could open them up to a class action. It is not good. So, Matt, what a strange situation and absolutely not what we thought we, we would be saying before the launch of what is, by all accounts, an absolutely remarkable game. Yep, uh, Sony have the possibility from uh, generally pissing about with their upgrade schemes and not being super upfront with their customers. Uh, they've displayed what Richard Hogue said is duplicity and greed, and that could overshadow all of Gorilla's work of this, what generally seems to be, hey, we've made a second one and it's better in every way, yeah. please enjoy. So it's, well, a, it's what, a terrible situation. What they enjoy doing is passing go and collecting 10 bucks with all of these yep. next gen upgrades. So the Absolutely. way that that worked is Microsoft just went in with smart delivery and said, hey, it's an, X an Xbox game is an Xbox game is an Xbox game. Doesn't matter where it is. You'll get the best version that your hardware can run. Mm -hmm. So there's no, yes, there might be a next gen upgrade patch, but under the smart delivery system, that's never going to be a paid thing. Now, EA then joined in with dual entitlement, but there's a few asterisks with that. And Take-Two were um, being a bunch of shit lords from the very start. So good on you, Take-Two. Mm -hmm. Sony then decided on a policy of charging $10 for, up uh, for the upgrades and generally being unclear with marketing, leaving it up to publishers. Yep. Now, this all came to a head, uh, well, a few times, but now especially with Forbidden West, where Jim Ryan, who is the, uh, the head of the PlayStation uh, group, he said that there would be a free upgrade path back when they announced the PS4 version because people thought, oh, next gen is next gen. Why is there a PS4 version? Surely the, the game's going to be held back. Jim said, no, don't worry. There'll be a free upgrade. However, when they showed off the pre-orders for this game, uh, Sony did a take two mm -hmm. and they made it so that you basically, to, to get the cross buy, so both PS4 and PS5, you had to get one of the more expensive editions that also came with a bunch of, Honestly, digital that you'll probably never touch. Yes. A bit rough. So people were very angry at this. I remember covering it in this channel. Yep. Sony then came in and they did a U-turn saying that, okay, no, we will, at least they more go with the spirit of their prior word mm -hmm. is what they committed uh, to doing. But they said it would be the last and that Gran Turismo 7, uh, God of War, and just any you know future Sonys, that they will be $10 upgrades. So... This then takes us to Richard Hoag seeing what's going on on the PlayStation app mm -hmm. and the PlayStation Store. And uh, I suppose, not blowing the whistle, maybe raising the alarm. Yeah, definitely. On this one. So people, you know, hopped into him uh, on, on Twitter to, to let him know. And essentially, as he says, duplicity and greed. So to give you the TLDR, and honestly, I was surprised when you showed me this on your phone just before we hit record. Yep. Uh, there's a PS4 and PS5 option. So it's PS4 and PS5 standard edition, $70. We'll use American currency for, for, for the benefit of everyone now. There's also a PS4 only edition that is $60, but it comes with a free digital upgrade to the PS5 edition. Mm -hmm. So while these technically are different SKUs in the store, you are literally getting the exact same thing. Just that one of them is 60 bucks and one of them is 70 bucks. Sony are only showing you the 70 buck one. Yeah, that's the one that's like, you know, when you get this, the default of, the, 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 they just show you a pre-order button. They're like, here's the pre-order button for the standard edition. That's the $70 one. On the website, you scroll down, you see the other editions. On console, you have to go specifically press the button to get to the other editions. And on mobile, you have to click a little uh, little button that'll you know select edition, which means that uh, the point is basically they're showing you just the $70 one. If you're not like, looking into the additions or think about what you're doing if you're just following the marketing which you know i think that's a reasonable thing to do for anyone to go oh well i'm going to buy this game yep 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 got it sweet i think that's a reasonable thing and that is you know sony you're taking ten dollars away from you for doing that yeah it's it's ridiculous like <laughs> the it it's just them misleading you and railroading you into one option then means that you don't see the exact same product for a lower price yep so it's very strange it's very mm -hmm. strange and i think you could quite easily call it a scam yep it sure. feels scammy it feels duplicitous it's honestly completely messed up that they're uh that they're doing this mm -hmm. and i do wonder why they just didn't well i guess that's the thing 
they have to stick by Jim's word with a free upgrade. Yeah. But they also, in their head, think it's a $70 game. Yeah. So, you know, in a way, have they, to manage some of their own public relations, have they basically lost $10 off every sale? And now, via controlling the flow of people's eyeballs, they're trying to mitigate that so that they can have the benefit of sticking by their word, but then mitigate the harm of that by just, you know, steering everybody to the $70 option. Yeah, so I wouldn't expect this to be a, uh, like, an something that the board sat around and decided on. I can't imagine this is a literal decision of, let's mislead our customers to get an extra $10 per sale. I think this is something that's likely occurred as a result of just how they've set up the uh, the, the SKUs in the back end and how they prioritize the PS5 version as opposed to the PS4 version. But it does get a little bit annoying when you think, well, that's not an excuse. Because that implies that there's no one at Sony going, what do, you know, from the user perspective, what does our store actually look like? You know, let me get at my personal phone at work, you know, uh, get you know, disconnect from whatever Sony VPN they're using for internal stuff, go through to the store. Does that look fine to me? That looks fine to me. There's no one doing that. Otherwise, I imagine someone would have raised it if this was an issue, which means that it may not be malice, but it's definitely, you know, could be considered negligence that they're omitting information that would influence a user's purchasing decision. Yeah. And ultimately, it's like, how many people watching this video did not know about this and have already done the pre-order? I mean, I, I, I didn't know until I saw this news. Yeah. So as for the process here on the site, right, you get the big banner image that is directing you to the game, okay? Now that directs you to the standard edition. Mm -hmm. You're going to think, oh, standard edition, that's obviously the cheapest one. 70 quid, it's a lot of money for a game, but hey, it's a great game. Okay, I'll pre-order the standard edition of the game. That's what it looks like the whole way through this flow. Yep. Or maybe, you know, you're a more discerning person, right? Uh, and you're maybe thinking, oh, is there going to be a season pass? Because the DLC is probably going to be great. So then you go down the editions. You got to look at them. You see, there's the digital adux, uh, deluxe edition for 80 pounds. But wait, there's another edition for 60 quid. It doesn't say PS5 and PS4. It says PS4 and digital upgrade. Hmm. So what? Is that like an automatic digital upgrade in the same day? You're then thinking to yourself, you know, surely this, this is, there's a cheaper one. It must be worse. Yeah. The deal must be different. Yeah, that's what you, that's like standard what people think. Yeah, exactly. So you buy the $70 one because you don't want to accidentally get the PS4 version and sure it's at a high frame rate, but you know, you don't have the nice haptics and all those things yeah. you, you might want because you're confused because they've made this really confusing. Mm -hmm. People have lived this store knowing how confusing it is. Uh, now, if you read down the page further, buy the Horizon Forbidden West Digital Edition for PS4 from the PlayStation Store to, <laughs> to get the Forbidden West Digital Edition for PS5 at no extra cost. Edition includes full game PS4 and PS5. Then you're thinking, oh, what's the catch? This is 10 bucks less. Why would Sony undercharge? Mm -hmm. And, no. Yeah, no. It, There's it, no catch. Yeah. It's, it's just you get a game for 60 quid. There you go. I mean... Mm. You know, we like to provide value with the videos. <laughs> yeah. I think this is, you know, th this isn't like we're giving you a coupon code, but in so far as what people would have thought for this game, yeah, everyone who watches this video knows they don't need to pay a tenner. Yep, absolutely. So if we get 30,000 views in this video, then, you know, add a zero onto that. And sorry, Sony. <laughs> <laughs> and or, for, or maybe uh, you're welcome, Sony, because we've helped you avoid a class action lawsuit. That's it. That's it. Your you know, invoice is Very altruistic here. Uh, for the mobile version, then, the addition is behind another menu. Yeah, so you can, you know, you can complete the purchase without ever seeing the fact that there's something cheaper mm -hmm. if you just follow the real road that's there for you. Because the standard edition, you know, there's a little icon showing you that there's going to be, you know, there's, there's options there. But if you're not thinking about that, if you're not thinking about additions and just want the game, you'll just do that. Yeah, and to sort of touch on the legality thing, I think let's just do this quote yeah. from Richard. Yep. You offered the PS5 version for $60, but you only told people you were offering it for $70. How would you feel about that? Is that not $10 of damages? Sometimes millions of dollars if this game proves to be as popular as we've you know otherwise seen. They announced that Horizon Zero Dawn sold 20 million copies. So it's the idea of, let's just say, a lawsuit ends up saying, all right, so you basically, via these misleading practices, mm -hmm. duped all of these people out of 10 bucks. Uh, okay, you now... Oh, every member of this class that amount of money. Mm -hmm. 
And somehow everyone in the class will get one dollar and everything will also go to the lawyers. Of course, yeah. the law system is tremendously efficient. Yeah, I mean that's what actually uh, that's one of the it's things. Wild. Yeah, that's one of the things uh, Richard said. He's like he does you know he, the possibilities definitely there for a class action suit. I think the legality of it is solid. Where if this goes ahead and they don't address it, then it could be very argued because uh, the quote there was him uh, kind of the only term I think is like larping as like you know what a regular would talk to Sony about. Like that's what they would say. They'd be like no. You, from our perspective, you were offering this, but didn't tell them, which means you're, you know, omitting information, uh, all of the, like, things that define an unfair business practice yeah. in the U.S. are all marched there. But he did say that there is a problem if a law firm needs to decide to take it up mm -hmm. and law firms with the strength to fight Sony's lawyers may not necessarily uh, get out of bed for anything uh, like less than 200 million. And obviously, two hundred million is like the, the the extreme best case of Forbidden West selling as much as the um, as Zero Dawn did over probably years. Probably sell more, maybe more in the long term, but in terms of like the you know whether this is still in cultural consciousness in exactly. a year or two, likely not that much. So it's it's frustrating that they will largely get away with this probably yeah. legally. I think the only thing is hopefully this gets the story <laughs> spreads and Sony PR are forced to respond because that's the only way we can see this. Uh, this literally deceptive business practice stopping. Yeah. So, look, at least you all know what's going on. Yeah. Now, as for the game itself, look, I think this game is a buy at $60. It's also a buy at $70, in fairness to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, it. so let's, you know, if we were to take a look here, um, basically improves in the original game in every conceivable way. Mm -hmm. Now, some people saying it's a little bit too varied for its own good, sometimes lacks focus, and also some complaints about character work, yeah. which in my head is like, yeah, the first one didn't have exceptional character work, yeah. but it was a nice thing to romp through, mm -hmm. um, and I, I never got playing the expansion that everybody says is absolutely, like, incredible. Um, a little bit like Iki Island, just that thing yeah. of, you know, they do their base game, and then they really show off everything they've learned. Uh, but basically, if you like the first game, it seems you're going to like this one more. Yeah. That said... For those of us who maybe have that Ubisoft sensitivity, mm. um, which I, this is a bit of a mean thing to say, mm. but just that idea of like, I don't want to go through a world full of map markers. Uh, you know, a few people on our team playing the new Assassin's Creed games. We want to get the main storyline, but you just have to weave your way through all of the random stuff, which mm. in fairness, I even remember in Assassin's Creed 3 and Revelations. Like, you sort of still had that weird thing of, hey, why'd you put a tower defense on this? I'm confused. <laughs> um, but that thing of focus. So that's mm. maybe a little bit of a criticism. But overall, people are basically bloody glowing yeah. uh, for this mm. game. Right? You know, it, that's basically that. So absolutely, this game is worth your consideration. And if you like the first one, definitely pick it up. But now you know you can pick it up for 60 bucks, and there's no catch. Yep. There, there, there may technically potentially be a catch, and this is the one thing where, like, uh, if they're brought up on it and they're like, well, this is clearly duplicitous marketing, they could say, ah, oh, no, there's a technicality. Uh, this SKU is only being offered for, you know, a year, and then we'll, uh, we'll, because we have plans to streamline our digital upgrade service instead of using this, so this is a temporary workaround, so it's kind of just lost in the back end, or uh, they, they could basically pull anything either they're asked to talk about what the difference is, especially because it's like the, f the digital upgrade to PS5 isn't technically the same as buying the PS5 version. Th they could probably argue that, even though it's not really true in any reasonable capacity. So there's, there's some argument there that they could get away with it, but generally speaking, it is just, no, this is the, the, they're overcharging you $10 for this game. And so, that's bullshit. Proceed with caution, but... Yep. At least you're warned, and you'll save the money, and frankly, we'll both save the money. So yep. uh, okay. I think this episode has been a big win for everyone. Absolutely. Right. We will see you in the next episode. So uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. There'll be uh, another video today. Maybe even two. Uh, well, tomorrow, whatever. Yep. There's just a lot of videos. That's basically the deal. So <laughs> click the box, and goodbye.